Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to my series on the Disinformation Dozen. The Disinformation Dozen is a group of 12 influencers identified by the Center for Countering Digital Hate who are responsible for 65% of all anti-vaccine misinformation on the internet. And in this series, I'm going to be showing you why they deserve to be on that list. This is the third episode where I'll be covering Riza Islam. I want to preface this one with a special message to Riza Islam himself. Riza, you are a influencer who targets the black community with what you call knowledge, but it is the opposite. You are handing them misinformation, which can be demonstrated to be false, but if they believe it, it could have detrimental and permanent effects on their health and livelihood. If you truly believe what you say, feel free to reach out and let's talk. I'll reach out to you as well. We don't have to talk on camera, but we can if you want to. With that said, let's get into this interview that Riza Islam gave on the radio broadcast Sway. And so I wanted to welcome our uh, brother Riza Islam. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. To the oh, show. I am honored to be on Sway. This oh, is on, this is this is. I mean, this is amazing, brother. Love the work you're doing, and uh, so. The measles outbreak, uh, number one, people have to understand that when it comes to the measles, uh, between 2004 and 2014, there were no measles deaths from the actual disease, but there were 108 deaths from the measles vaccine. Right out of the gate, the first thing out of his mouth is a half-truth, which in this case, in my book, is a lie. From 2004 to 2014, it's true that there were no deaths from measles in the U.S., but worldwide, measles killed 2,700,000 people. Most of those deaths occur in areas where the measles vaccine is not readily accessible to most of the population. These are mostly poor and middle income countries. It's also not true that there were 108 deaths from the measles vaccine. He's pulling this number from the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, which is a survey system that anybody could go into and report that they had a vaccine adverse event. It does not check to see whether or not you are telling the truth, but you can report it. With millions of people being vaccinated every single year, there are bound to be normal health adverse events that happen in close proximity to that vaccination. Those are going to be caught by the VAERS system as well. What you need to do in order to demonstrate that the vaccine is causing these things is actually investigate each case. But luckily, researchers are there to already do that for us. And when these researchers investigated these supposed 108 deaths due to measles vaccines, they found that there was no causative link to the measles vaccine. Instead, these people all died from things that unfortunately were just going to happen anyway, whether or not they were vaccinated. If you're going to make the claim, you have to do the work to follow it up. Riza is not doing that. He is taking an unverified number from an unverified reporting system and presenting that to you as truth. It is not truth but it gets worse. The MMR vaccine, measles, mumps, rubella, which is known as a trivalent, multivalent, or three viruses in one needle, is the exact vaccine or vaccination that Dr. William Thompson, who was the senior lead scientist over the Center for Disease, Disease Control's vaccine division, has stated himself, quote, this vaccine gives black boys autism at the rate of 236% more than Caucasian boys. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not something that came from Brother Reason. It's not something that just I made up. This came from this scientist in the CDC who currently still works there. What he's talking about here was a real mess. If you want to read about all the drama and the sequence of events, I've provided links for you in the description. But all you need to know is that it doesn't matter what people say. It matters what the data show and several independent reviews of the data that this doctor claims to have omitted from his studies actually show that there is no link between MMR vaccines and autism. If this were true, if MMR vaccines actually caused autism in anybody, it would be repeatable. And yet study after study, even in the most high-risk people who have autistic siblings, it shows over and over again that the MMR vaccine does not cause autism. It's 2021, Riza. We can leave this dead myth behind and stop using it to take advantage of the black community. What is in the vaccine? Do you know? Yes. Okay. Uh, there are multiple things. Formaldehyde is one. Yes, formaldehyde is there as a preservative. It's there in very tiny amounts, which are non-toxic. Formaldehyde can also be found in several foods. 
such as meat and poultry, milk, fish, sugar, produce, and coffee. All of these things are fine to eat and fine to give to children, just because it has a tiny amount of a substance that is toxic in larger amounts does not mean that it is bad. Uh -huh. Aluminum is another. Aluminum salts, not the element itself, is there to act as an adjuvant. Adjuvants stimulate the immune system in order to give you the best protection possible from the least amount of vaccine doses possible. Aluminum-based adjuvants in vaccines have been around for decades. They have a huge safety record behind them, and you can read all about that in the description. Uh, there's something called thimerosal, which is a mercury uh, derivative or the mercury preservative. Okay. This is now people try to say, well, no, you get mercury from fish. That is methyl mercury. We're dealing with ethyl mercury. This uh -huh. is an inorganic form of mercury that does not wash out of the brain. Yeah, that's not true. But even if it were, mercury has been taken out of vaccines since 2001. No childhood vaccination has thimerosal in it. Only one form of flu vaccine has it, and you can choose to not get that one. Riza is literally stating a decades-old lie at this point. Now, according to the CDC, before the age of 18 months, you have to inject a certain number of vaccinations, and that includes MMR, Hep B, et cetera, all these different vaccinations, including vitamin K, which is not an actual vitamin coming from that needle. It actually has 0 0.9 micrograms of benzoyl alcohol, hence why the baby gets jaundiced because it attacks the liver directly. That's just another side point for the pregnant mothers. <sighs> Vitamin K shots absolutely have vitamin K in them, and vitamin K is actually a mixture of compounds that your body needs in order to produce clotting factors. Without these clotting factors, your body can't stop itself from bleeding. The problem is that because it's a vitamin, you have to take it in from what you eat. Your body can't produce it on its own. So babies won't get enough of it until they're eating food. So in order to prevent babies from having this rare condition called late vitamin K deficiency bleeding, which in most cases is really dangerous, you give them a vitamin K shot. This vitamin K deficiency bleeding is so dangerous because it often happens without you knowing, and without you knowing that your baby is bleeding internally, it gets to the point where it's really serious. In one case study, including six infants, four had bleeding in their brain and two had bleeding in their intestines. Although the six infants survived, two needed emergency brain surgery in order to save their lives. One had severe brain damage with a stroke, which left them paralyzed and with cognitive delays, and two had mild to moderate brain injuries. Only one of these parents knew the risk of not getting this vitamin K shot for their children, and on average, this vitamin K deficiency bleeding has a mortality rate of 20%. The easiest way to avoid this is to get a vitamin K shot. It's really simple, and it will protect you from being one of the unlucky parents who has this happen to their baby. Donald Trump himself, he just he eloquently described. He said, I want to spread them out. I'm for vaccinations, but spread them out over a longer period of time. Why? Because the amount of mercury that is combined with uh, within all those vaccinations mm -hmm. is not at all safe for a child. He really can't let this thimerosal thing go, can he? Riza, please let me know what you think when you learn that thimerosal is not in childhood vaccines at all. What is your background? Background, uh, Compton, California, youngest of 10 children, uh, Bloods and Crip gang banging, uh, very young, very young, all of that. And, of course, Nation of Islam born. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I, once my stepfather was locked in prison, of course, family collapsed and, like I said, gang violence, et cetera, ensued. But then I found my way back and started doing a lot of activism, mm -hmm. community work, humanitarian work, and been in my community, man, doing my best for a very, very long time since I was about 12 years old. I left this in because I think that it's honestly a very inspiring story. And I hope... I hope that Riza is actually doing his best and is just severely misled and not purposely spreading the misinformation that earns him a spot on the disinformation dozen. Again, Riza, if you want to talk, let's talk. Well, I think that brings the third episode of this disinformation dozen series to a close. As always, I'm not an authority on this topic. I'm just a scientist who knows how to listen to other scientists, and I'm telling you what the best data say. That's why all of the links to all of the science and information that I talk about in this video are linked in the description below so that you can check them out for yourself. 
Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you join me for the rest of my Disinformation Dozen series. If you want to do that, don't forget to subscribe so that you can join me next week, where I'll be debunking Dr. Joseph Mercola. See you then.